I was going over some notes this week and realized I had forgotten how much studying I had to do in nursing school. For additional help on this topic and more, visit nursing.com slash heart. I was reviewing distributive shock and I learned a new key point that I wanted to share with you because it actually cleared up a lot of my misunderstanding and confusion from nursing school while learning about distributive shock. Most people think of shock as emotional distress or sudden fright in response to a traumatic event. But in nursing terms, shock is when there's not enough blood circulating around the body. So distributive shock is a type of shock in which blood is not being distributed as it should be, hence the name distributive shock. Hi, I'm Abby and I'm an RN, but remember during nursing school, I struggled to figure out the difference between distributive shock and other types of shock. You know, like the difference between septic shock and distributive shock, or anaphylactic shock and distributive shock, or even neurogenic shock and distributive shock. Maybe you caught on quicker than I did because distributive shock is actually the bucket that the other three fall into. So septic, anaphylactic, and neurogenic shock are all types of distributive shock. All three of them have a common symptom or response which interferes with vascular tone and causes massive peripheral vasodilation, which disrupts distribution of blood throughout the body. This is a key to knowing what we are dealing with with distributive shock. I'm going to put a link in the description that will have a quick practice quiz that you can take on distributive shock to check your current level of understanding. Go ahead and take the quiz right now, and then I'll tell you a bit more about the different types of distributive shock. I mentioned massive peripheral vasodilation is the key to knowing that we are dealing with distributive shock, but why is that? Dig into your knowledge about the anatomy and physiology of the circulatory system. Remember, under normal conditions, the blood flows from the heart to the essential and non-essential organs and tissues and then back through the vessels. But if there is a problem with vascular tone, blood pressure suffers, causing the blood to pool in the peripherals instead of going through the circulatory system and back to the heart like normal. What effect will this have? Well, if the blood is pooling instead of circulating, that equals lower blood pressure and reduces blood perfusion to the tissues and organs. If there is not enough pressure or blood volume in the vessels, blood and oxygen have trouble reaching the brain. So in this case, you will start to see confusion in a shock patient. Reduction of flow also affects the kidneys and means they will not function properly, so there will be decreased urinary output. These are just a few of the signs and symptoms of distributive shock, but let's dig in a little deeper to the specific three types. So first, septic shock. This will probably be the most common type of shock you will deal with in the hospital. It definitely was for me. Septic shock develops from an overwhelming infection. The infection causes a severe immune response which interferes with vascular tone and we get the problems that we were just talking about. I'm not going to go into all of the details right now, but if you want more specifics on septic shock, you can find detailed lessons on nursing.com. I'll put a link in the description for you. The second type, anaphylactic shock, this is really quite similar to septic shock, but instead of an infection causing the immune response, it is an allergic reaction causing the immune response, and that also interferes with vascular tone. The third and last type of distributive shock is neurogenic shock. This is different from septic or anaphylactic shock because instead of involving the immune system, the problem is actually caused by a loss or disruption of the sympathetic nervous system. This is often the result of an injury to the spinal cord. The injury causes a decrease in sympathetic nervous system activity, which results once again in interference with vascular tone. Normally, the heart would try to compensate and beat faster when it senses lower blood pressure or hypotension. But an important symptomatic difference between neurogenic shock and the others under the umbrella of distributive shock 
is that a patient experiencing neurogenic shock actually experiences bradycardia due to SNS disruption. So remember, when there's interference with vascular tone, the blood will start to pool in the peripherals instead of circulating as expected and could lead to distributive shock. These are common situations that you will deal with while working as an RN. Let me share with you what helped me. I'll show you what I did on nursing.com to master distributive shock. I included a link to the lesson on distributive shock in the description where you can take some time reviewing. I stressed about my understanding, passing my classes, and ultimately passing the NCLEX. I found success when I started using nursing.com because it helped me find the must-know information with clear and concise lesson videos, and then I would check my knowledge with the lesson quizzes. I used SimCLEX to not only evaluate if I was ready for the NCLEX, but it would also give me personalized suggestions on what I should study to fill in my knowledge gaps. I could focus on those topics further with custom quizzes and use the additional study tools that are adapted to my personal learning style. Find additional help on this topic and more at nursing.com heart. I hope this has helped you to understand distributive shock a bit better and the different types. Remember, we are rooting for you, so go out and be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.